Uh, so a lot of people watching this will be seeing this kind of activity for the first time ever in their life. Right. Well, sorry about that. Because <laughs> it would be a bit of a shock to their system. And it might be hard to believe. What, what would you say to those people? They, they won't believe it. There's nothing I can say. You know, I've got old friends who are, you know, who are mathematicians and scientists and they work in the finance industry. They, 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 they accept it. But you, yeah. they, you, it's, you can't change someone's worldview, mm -hmm. yeah, and that's not my job. I'm here to only help the people who, who kind of want to go deeper into consciousness, into God, yeah. I'm already, there is, you know, it's hard enough when someone really, really wants to grow into God, into truth. It's already hard enough, let alone trying to convert people who don't want to or mm -hmm. have no interest, you know. They'll, you know, eventually it'll come, you know, they'll, they'll get there in their own time. But even, even a skeptic who comes to your class would yes. have an experience, oh, you, yeah. you've said? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Usually husbands or <laughs> boyfriends get dragged along by, by their partners uh -huh. and they'll, they'll sit there during the whole talk and go like this. I had this <laughs> big butch guy in San Francisco, he's, uh, someone, he, his brother's wife brought him along and then he, was just, he looked like a big, he was a big stock, he looked like a truck driver. And then he, was, he, was, he moved more than everyone. He was just going crazy. And at the end, he, he told us, he said, I was totally skeptical. I just, I, was, I, was, I just came here just to keep, you know, what's he quiet. And he goes, well, I'm a believer now. It, it, it's real. You know? And those people, they get the most high. They just jump around and go, oh my God, it, it's real. It's real. <laughs> right. you know, spirit is real. And when you're, when you're waving your hand over somebody's body, what's happening in that moment? <laughs> I don't know. It just does. It just does. I just get an intuition or a feeling. Even to say I get an intuition to move in a certain area is at an extra level of doing. A lot of the time I'm just not even thinking. I'm just sort of not there. It just happens. Yeah. CAP stands for Kundalini Activation Process. And if all of this looks like a scene from a 70s hippie commune, listen to what CAP creator Venet Wong has to say. When you see them moving and shaking, and, and especially when you see it live in person for the first time, you just go, whoa, you know, the people, and then I might have some demonstration, people in the front, and then people go, wow, what was going on inside? And the people in the demo, and they go, nothing? <laughs> like internally, nothing's going on. You're just, you're just resting as the witness and your body's just moving and shaking. Yeah, and you could be even crying and screaming and even the, the crying, there's often no story attached. It's like, oh, I was crying, it was really sad and wailing even, but what, what was it about? Nothing. Hmm. It was just like emotions being released or energy moving through the body. Somebody told me yesterday that it's very pleasurable too. Yes. <laughs> Tell me about that. Um, Yes, yeah, sensual energy can move through sexual energy. Um, that can happen, um, and so there's, that's the sort of sensual, sexual aspect of it. That that energy. Not everyone has it. Certain people tap into that. And so, for people who don't understand, what is Kundalini? Okay, um, Kundalini. It can be used in different terms, and it, there is no fixed definition of it. Um, most people refer to Kundalini as you know, just the self-will practices where you're generating energy, you know, kundalini yoga, where, mm -hmm. or, you know, the Taoist sexual practices, raising the energy up, the chi, kundalini chi, life force, it's all the same thing. Now, um, most practices are self-will. You use determination and your consciousness and will to move energy, generate your own energy. This is different. This is a transmission of energy and from co one consciousness to another. And so it, it's almost a downward, the other one's an upward driving energy. This is more a downward descending spirit force. And it's closer to Shaktipat in India, they call it Shaktipat. Yeah. And it's, it's, just, it's just given. Yeah. Isn't that usually when the guru initiates their student? Yeah, you could, yeah, in, the, in, in India they use the guru, you know, devotee thing. But it's really just conscious transmission from one being to another. And really, that happens in, in anything. In, in, if you're learning an art form, uh, you have an, a, a, an apprentice and, and a teacher. And it's more, beyond just the transmission of the skills, it's a transmission of the energy, the capacity. You just hang around them and you, you kind of just get it. Yeah. It's really, that's what it is.
What are some of the experiences you hear usually after a, fir a person's first session? <laughs> I did one class in San Diego. Second class, a week later, they came back and I say, like, okay, what's been happening? This is what I do. I kind of say, tell me what was your experience and what's been happening since I last saw you. First person, I gave up smoking. Second person, I gave up drinking. Third person, I quit my job. After one session? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, usually the job that they've hated for you know, years and been meaning to do. Yeah. Things that they've always wanted to do is I knew they had to, but they, didn't, they just never got around to it. They didn't have that will to, to push through it. And it just happens. Mm. You're just aligned with your higher self and it, it just happens. My name is Michael. I'm from New York City and I'm a cat virgin. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. My name is uh, Paula and um, I think I've done cat maybe seven times or so. When you guys were doing all this, like I felt this, this energy inside me, like, and I got scared. <laughs> so then I was like, what has happened? Like I was losing myself and I just started like moving kind of like I felt so much vibrations just I don't know what's happening and I but I felt fearful and I just kind of surrendered and I just felt something really powerful so it was amazing I yeah even though I have like these vibrations in my head so for most people, they kind of live in this narrow range of, of feeling a little bit good a little bit bad yeah they allow only a certain amount of feeling capacity but what this energy does, it opens that capacity to feel. So in terms of what you actually do, um, you just lie down on yoga mat, I put some music on, you know, me and the uh, facilitator will just wave our hands over you, touch certain spots on your body, chakra points. Um, and your job is basically to relax as deeply as possible. Yeah? And that, that sounds easier than, than it is. Yeah, to really deeply relax, to relax your mind, to have no, no thought, no, no attachment to anything. Yeah. Okay, so we're on a break right now. We just finished the first part of the first day and I fell right into it. I mean, before the music even started, I was having this like almost, almost euphoric experience and, and I fell right into it. I was moving my body, my neck, I could feel everything. And then something happened and I got into my own head where I started producing this video in my head and I was thinking like, okay, what am I gonna shoot later? What am I going to? film next and as I started to do that I kind of fell out of the trance and the movement that I was in and I had the same experience that I had when I was doing uh, plant medicine in Costa Rica which was I was in a room full of people having their own experience they're screaming they're laughing they're they're dancing and something happens where when I'm in a room like that my all my energy goes to them and I, I just get out of my own experience and so that happened and for the rest of the time I kind of just lay there but that first part was still an incredible experience and we still have a whole weekend ahead of us so so we'll see cool that's it I think yeah <laughs> that's it <laughs> yeah all right all right <laughs> But when, uh, when he had um, everyone like showing them in the beginning, my first reaction was like, there's no fucking way that's happening. I mean, it, it's, it's got to be staged or something like that, right? That was my first, my first reaction. And then when we all started, we laid down, closed our eyes. I was like, yeah, this is not going to happen. I don't know, you know, it's just kind of like that. So very soon, I don't even know what happened exactly, but just all of a sudden, I just felt my body moving. I, I, it was um, incontrollable, like I couldn't control it, it was just involuntary movements and um, nothing that was, I, I think it was just more strange than anything right? because I didn't have control over it and um, at one point that you know my mind was like trying to understand like how is this possible, how is my body moving without me actually moving it and um, at one point you know my, my mind just said like okay I guess this is really happening so I'm, I'm just gonna leave, you know?
So on day two, I was surrounded by orgasmic sounds, and while I didn't experience that, I wanted to know what they were feeling in that moment. Hey, Raquel. So we just did the meditation part of the class. Uh huh. You were sitting right next to me, and you and I were having two wildly, completely different experiences. <laughs> so, tell me what you were going through. I could feel you, for sure. What were you feeling? Oh, okay. I was um, well. For starters, um, there was a lot of orgasmic energy. With me? No, no, no. Just, oh, with just, you? Yeah, yeah, just like in in my body, in my yeah, in my cells, if you want to say it like that, and. Um, but there was a time when I was like moving and I like, for some reason I touched you and like, you know, I could feel your energy. And um, it, was, it was cool, you know? I just tapped into uh, infinite consciousness and, and uh, I felt so expanded and uh, as if I was infinite, just like I'm everything but nothing at the same time. So. When you tap into that, it's like you are liberated from everything because you know you're not your body, you're not your thoughts, you're not your emotions. So it's like, it's like you can feel the cosmic joke, you know, it's like, mm. fuck. So that's why I start laughing so hard. You heard me laughing, oh, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's why I laugh so hard because it's like, oh my God, you know, like, really? <laughs> so I have to be honest, during that experience, um, for me, the meditative part of it, Yes. Uh, other than the point when I don't know if it was you or somebody else touched me and I, 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 I was shaking and yes, feeling it. Yes. Other than that, um, it was just a very meditative, it was like me doing a meditation in my room by yes, myself. Yes. Um, what's the difference between what I was feeling, even though I did have that oneness and I felt super connected with everything around yes, me in the world, yes. but it was, it was just like kind of blissful and I just lay there. Yes, yes. Um, what do you say to that kind of experience? Okay. The there's really two transmissions going on at the same time. The kundalini, which is the life force, the chi, and that's where you see all the wild, crazy movement. And then the non-dual states, which is really not of the body. It's almost like taking you out of the body to some extent, especially this morning's uh, meditation, which is different to the afternoon one. Now, the non-dual states is, in Tibetan Buddhism, they call it the subtle, subtle body, it's the, or the causal body, and it's a more subtle phenomena. So more people will feel the kundalini because that's easier to feel. But the non-dual states is more difficult to feel. Yeah. And what you're describing as, oh, you feel oneness, it's, it's for a lot of people, they'll have that, but it's more from a mental acceptance level. Mm. Yeah. And if you've heard from the sharings today, when it becomes overwhelmingly real, it, 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 they're just in shock. Yeah. It's like, this is one thing. Yeah, you, you notice a difference between just a lot, you know, yeah. what you're hearing in, in the rooms and that, oh, I'm at peace. It's a different kind. Of, it, it's more subtle and mentally, descriptively, mentally, it's the same thing. It's like, oh, I'm, you're just verbally describing the same thing, but the emotional impact of being that as your direct experience is totally different. That's what make the, makes the changes. So, Kim, um, during this year, I really liked your experience. Did you, were you like me where you didn't really have like what was going on around us, which was like the orgasmic, like, was it just pretty calm for you? Um, I was calm. I did move some and I had some, some sounds. Okay. Um, I can't say that I had the orgasmic. Right. Um, Same. And, and, yeah, I was <laughs> yeah. trying to get out of my head because I kept listening to that and I was like, ooh, I want some of that. Um, but I had to keep leaving that because that yeah. wasn't occurring for me. Um, but a lot of bliss, just even if I was moving, it was just like super mm. peaceful and calming. And also um, a pretty big epiphany for you, right? Yes, yes. Tell me about that, which was like beautiful and sad at the same time. <laughs> right, so the epiphany during, well, I guess the epiphany happened after, but during the session, I, I was just one with the universe and it was so amazingly incredible to just have that feeling that we're all the same, you know? And so that was just beautiful. And then as we came out of the session and we had to come back into our body, I guess that's when it hit me and I was so sad and I started crying and I was like- Why sad? I was sad because I was like, when I was in the session, it was like, there's no race. There's no skin color, right? We all are just one human melting light energy. And then to come out and be like, shit, now I have to, come back to life 
where race is really important. Like, I can't neglect race. I can't go around and say, hey, you know, don't look at my race or race doesn't matter. I'm an English professor, and so I do a lot of equity work on my campus. And um, I get to pick my own theme for my class, since it's English, basically composition. And so recently I've been doing the theme of race and racism uh, and uh, white privilege. And so having that, that, that like hit me that there's no race and then I have to go back and then talk about race. Your whole class is about that. <laughs> my whole class uh, tomorrow, you know, we have readings on like wow. the Fair Housing Act and how that impacted people of different races differently. And um, so how do, you, how do you navigate both those things, knowing that we're just one, but also knowing that in society, we are seen by our race and um, it can have positive or ne negative impacts on your life depending on what race you are. We ended the weekend with a powerful partner meditation and peering into the eyes of what some would consider a perfect stranger, I became suddenly aware of the familiarity between us, a glimmer of oneness, if you will. We smiled, we cried, and in the end, we embraced until that feeling of non-duality fell away slowly like baby teeth. I hope this video was helpful for you. Make sure to subscribe because there's a new video every Monday. Please show your love by liking this video and check out the description below for a link to my Instagram where you can connect with me directly and a link to my website where you can get a free copy of my book, The Enlightened Barista. Oh, and don't forget to click the subscribe button for more videos.